We were therefore buried with him through baptism and death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may have life. He's saying, hey, if you really got Christ in your life, then, then you don't do that anymore. Because what they were saying was the same thing. Like, well, hey, if it's all about grace, then we're going to live however we want because God's just going to forgive us. You see, you gotta, you got to take a look at it. And you gotta, it becomes a question of your heart at that point. Are, are you wise and prudent? Or are you the one who's saying, hey, if we're going to get forgiven, let's, let's have some fun. Or you might call that the simple. And so, so it's, it's interesting. We sometimes think we get this, this get out of jail free card, but, but we don't. We make the same decisions sometimes. It doesn't matter if Christian or non-Christian. It's the, it's the choices that we make and the path that we get ourselves on. And now the prudency danger, and they, here's the big difference, is they do something. They do something. The, the simple just feel, eh, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to keep on going. And uh, they might admit it, they might acknowledge it, but they don't do anything. They just keep on going. And so tonight, I want to, so how does this apply to us tonight? Uh, how does it, you know, when, when you see warning signs in your life, when you, when you see them coming, because we see them, don't we? I mean, yeah, I mean, you know what I'm talking about? Some of you, one of you, or at least one person knows what I'm talking about. I'm okay with that. Um, you know, when we see danger up ahead, we have to make a decision. And, and we either choose to act as a wise person or we choose to act as a simple person. And once we choose, there are two different outcomes. The result being that the prudent person or the wise person, they avoid pain. How many like pain? A couple of you. I don't. I don't like pain. I avoid it at all costs. And uh, they avoid, but they see the writer of Proverbs tells us specifically that the outcome of the simple four words, they suffer for it. They suffer for it. Because they saw the warning signs and kept going, they suffered. And, and suffering people often want to blame God. Well, I'm suffering. Well, God, it's your fault that I'm suffering. Is it? You see, God works on basic principles. It's like this. If, if I climb up to the top of this building and I jump off, what's going to happen? I'm going to hit the concrete really, really hard and it's going to hurt. Right? And, and I, yeah, I thought about doing that tonight just to you know, give a, a living example, but then I thought, that's a bad idea. And so, so but, but it's a principle. It's, it's the principle of what? What's it called? Gravity. Gravity. Gravity will take you down, and it will cause your body to splatter onto the cement. And so it's not God's fault, right? It's not God's fault that I, I fell off the building and gravity took its course. I can't blame God. It was me for being up on top of the building, jumping off. And so, the, uh, now don't misunderstand me. I, I want to make this clear. I'm not saying that all suffering happens because of poor choices. I mean, not every suffering in the world you can blame on poor choices. I'm not talking about the starving children in Africa. Or, or the, uh, the people that are victims of natural disaster and things like that. I don't believe that that is suffering because of poor choices. Okay? I'm talking about you and me in our life. And you know, if you're honest with yourself, you know when you're suffering because of a poor decision, don't you? You know it. I mean, you can try to deny it. I think we're good at trying to make ourselves, you know, oh, it wasn't really my fault. Yes, it was. Well, I mean, if you're really honest with yourself, a lot of times it, it's our fault. And so we suffer because of the choices that we make. I mean, you, you saw the warning signs, usually, and you just keep going. And the problem with not changing direction, as soon as we see the warning sign, is that you know, the further you get down the road, the, the less options you have. When I was in Bible school, and, and the, the very, very pretty blonde girl uh, stepped into my life, there were, I had, I, 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 I jumped paths. I had, I was going this way, I was on the right path, things were going great. I saw her, all of a sudden I was on this path. And, and I had plenty of opportunities between here and the end of the path to turn around and, and, and quit what I was doing and get back on the right path. But I followed the path because I was simple. I, I followed the path all the way down to its end to the, to the point where I got kicked out of Bible school. And we got caught so many times do it there. I mean, we got, I don't know how long the whole story, we got caught so many times where, where I had the chance to go, I'm going to make the change. But I didn't. I just kept on going. And, 
And I mean, even to the point where I was up my way home where I had to tell my parents that I get kicked out of Bible school, and, and I stopped by the, the place that she was working. She's like, to say, I'm like, duh! <laughs> I did it. And, and so, you know, we, but here's, here's the principle, though. The further we get down the path, the less options we have. The further we get down that, the, the quicker, the quicker we get off the path and get back onto the right path, the, the easier, the less consequences we're going to suffer. The less pain that we will suffer, the less harm that we will suffer. And, uh, and, and so it's a matter of I, I, how far am I down the path and can I get off now and suffer less harm? And, uh, I mean, and, you know, people might come up to you or maybe you come up to your friends and like, man, I see that you're drinking and, and I know where that's going to end. Or I see that you and your, your boyfriend and your girlfriend, man, I see what you guys are doing. It's not going to end well for you. And, and you have that choice. You're on the path. And you have the choice, you know, okay, they said something. Do I continue going down the path this way or do I listen to my friends and get off the path and get back onto the right one? It's a hard decision. And, and sometimes in our lives, we, we make the wrong decisions, and it's difficult. But the, the good of changing that path far outweighs the pain that you will suffer in your life by staying on the same path. Man, I know every single day of that year that I was out of Bible school, I was, just, I was just sitting there spinning my wheels. And not only did I have to, you know, by the time I went all the way to the end of the path, and the girl wasn't even interested in me anymore, she was like, Dude, you are so far gone from your calling that I'm not even interested in you as a person. And so not only did I get kicked out of Bible school for a year, but the girl went away. And uh, fortunately, God brought a better one into my life. I married her. But you see, it's... You know, but, it's the end of the result of the path. You know where the path leads. It's important, you know, especially in the area of relationships, this is important. You know, to kind of evaluate our relationships, whether it's with your parents or your friends or a significant other, you, you need to evaluate that. And a good way to apply this principle to a relationship is to, you never evaluate a relationship based on, on where it is now, but you always base a, or evaluate a relationship based on where is it going. Where is it going? Is, it, is there good things happening in it or are there bad things happening in it? You know, and you know, is my relationship with my mom growing stronger or is it growing you know, weaker? Is the relationship with my dad stronger, weaker, good things, bad things? And, uh, and we need to evaluate that. And so here's the thing. If you decide tonight, I hope that you do, to get serious about this principle in your life, to watch out for those warning signs, the caution signs, there's four words that I want you to remember tonight. If you happen to bring something to write them down, these are good things to write down. And um, they're not steps, but they're experiences kind of along the way. And the first thing that you have, if you're going to deal with the, the path principle, the first thing that you do is you have to have action. You have to have action. The very first, if, if, you, if you have to do something, you know, whether it's, you have to do something, whether it's ending the relationship, whether it's, you know, not hanging out with certain people, you know, whatever it is, there, there's an action that you have to take. It says the prudent see danger, they see danger, and they, who remembers it? They take refuge. In other words, they do something about it. They do something about it. So whether that means you have to end a relationship, whether that means you have to take a phone call to somebody, maybe you got to take your, uh, your computer or your laptop and take it out of your bedroom where it's all private, you know, man, who knows what you, whatever it is, and only you know that. Only you know what it is, but sometimes we have to take action. We do have to take action if we're on the wrong path. The second thing is this, is sacrifice. First word is action, the second word is sacrifice. It costs something. It costs, it'll cost you something. The principle requires sacrifice. And it, you, you're probably going to have to give something up. And, uh, one of the things that my youth pastor made me do after my, when I, when I got out of, I got kicked out of Bible school, it was midway through the, like it was Christmas time, Merry Christmas, and, uh, and I had to go meet with my, uh, my youth pastor, and he, and he, 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 he really he laid down the ground rules. He said, all right, we're going to do this, we're going to get you back into Bible school, and here's the rules. Number one, what do you think it was? No dating, right? No dating for a year. Do you know what I, you know when I started hanging out with my wife? Like when she kind of came back into my life, it was like November. It was like November of the end of that year. So I had I had like a month and a half where I was really into her and I could not date her. And I didn't. 
I did know. Uh, yeah, I told her that. I'm like, yeah, I said, I'm sorry, but I cannot make it right now. And I was, I was.